In this video we are going to 3D print and build an axial compressor. This is something I have never done before and to be honest I have seen on YouTube only few attempts printing a working axial compressor. And I don't mean models, I mean actual working device. So this is what we are going to do today, so let's get right into it. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. The closest thing I have done to axial compressor is the turbine that I made in 2023 summer. If you haven't seen this I highly recommend watching it. This turbine worked really well and since then I had an idea to reverse the design and make an axial compressor. I forgot the idea since I saw the model online that looked really cool and well designed. So now it's time to make it happen. This model that I'm going to build in this video is not my design, but I leave the link down below if you are interested doing it by your own. I did some small changes to the model. Originally the compressor goes together with M5 bolts, but on my channel standard is M4, so I changed that. And also later in this video I designed different plates to this compressor, but we speak about this a bit later. To get this project started, first of course I 3D printed all the models that are needed to build this compressor. I 3D printed most of the things with PLA by using Creality K1 and Pambulab. Both of those printers are insanely accurate and fast. That's the reason why I recently only used those two. Also I use racing printer to print rotor plates and stators. I use racing printers because those parts are so small and to increase the performance I want them to be as detailed and perfect as possible. Those parts are the most important thing in this model, let's be real. And two body parts I ordered from PCB Way because I wanted those parts where the rotor is to be transparent. Those parts in front of you are resin printed and they look like glass. Absolutely fantastic. By the way, if you didn't know, PCB Way is perfect place for order custom PCBs, but this is not all what they do. They also do CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and even insection molding service. If you ever watch my videos, you should know I'm using their service all the time and every single time they have done absolutely excellent job. Like I mentioned before, for this video I ordered two transparent resin printed parts and post processed with some type of clear coat. We'll actually have no idea how they make transparent resin so transparent. I have tried to do it, I don't even get close to this. That's why PCB Way is perfect option for everybody who needs something but don't have right machines, skills or tools. Just upload your 3D model to PCB Way website, select the material and PCB Way will do the rest. PCB Way is your one stop solution. The first thing to assemble is the rotor. Every single blade is an individual model and they have to be press fitted to the rotor. This is pretty much like real jet engine blades are connected to the rotor. Even though I just told they have to be press fitted in place, well it's not really possible because the fit is just so tight. So the hammer is required. After a bit hammering, the blades are locked in there permanently. There is no way to get those out. But it's not a bad thing. They will not come loose and fly off when the rotor is spinning around 20,000 RPMs. By the way, I tried to spoil as less as possible, but I did run some tests with those plates. But I ended up changing them. The reason for this we speak about a bit later in this video. Now when the rotor is ready, I can add two bearings to the both sides with the stators. They will be attached to the rotor with 3D printed nuts. By the way, I'm not a fan of 3D printing threads at all. But I printed those with Creality K1, which is extremely accurate printer, so thankfully they turned out well and working. Threads are really difficult things to print successfully. But now when the whole rotor is finally ready, I can assemble this into the housing. I have a gap over here, of course all the air will leak out, so I filled this with some hot glue. Now the legs and we are ready to go. The story with the legs is pretty simple, one part screws into another part. Then one thing will be attached to compressor body, after this I can attach the legs to the things that I just attached to compressor body and done. Little spoiler, those legs are complete trash. I like the idea but they are just too sloppy and actually unusable. But I made them semi usable by using some zip ties. And by the way, to the front actually goes this big intake, but it's not needed so I ended up not using it. But now we are ready to spin up this compressor and see does it actually work.
After the first test something broke and I was pretty sure what it was. And I was 100% correct, the coupler that I didn't trust even a little bit. I designed this stronger and tried to run the test again, but it broke again by the way. Like I'm not going to show you every single time when it broke, so I'm just gonna tell you, I redesigned this 7 times. Anyway when, <laughs> anyway, when I got something that worked pretty well, I went outside to record some footage with the smoke to visualize the airflow. I was doing this outside with zero windy day, but still the air was moving a bit around, you know, the turbulence. It's never 100% steady, so it was a bit difficult, but I did got something. The smoke test I did didn't give me any valuable information, but I did it to get the cool shots, even though it didn't turn out as well as I expected. But now I'm back indoors and ready to test this compressor for real. If this is a real compressor, it should compress the air and should blow up the balloon. This is exactly what we are going to do next, try to blow up the balloon. Sadly it didn't do it. For most of my tests I use 3S LiPo battery, but this motor and DSC can handle up to 4S. So to increase the speed of the rotor I'm going to use those smaller but more powerful batteries. Still nothing, it's not going to blow up the balloon. Also you might notice a little problem over here, I was aware of it but I speak about this after the tests. You know the balloon is not actually so easy to blow up, I tried something a bit easier. I took one rubber glow and did the balloon test again. Sadly it didn't even blow up the rubber glow. Also the housing doesn't stay together anymore, which is a huge problem, because the air will leak out from there. While testing I try to keep this together as much as I can, but still it has to be fixed to continue. The reason for this is the fact that I unscrewed and screwed this housing together more than 10 times, because of the coupler that broke all the time, and the continuous screwing ruined the undersize holes, but we move on by fixing all those problems. Because the performance of the compressor was trash, the reason for this has to be the rotor, the blades to be exact. The amount of the blades and shape of the blades has to be changed, so I completely redesigned this part of the compressor. I changed the blade shape and instead of using 5 blades per stage, now I'm going to use 25 blades per stage, 50 blades in total. This time I didn't need to hammer those blades into the rotor, I designed them as one whole piece and resin printed the model with some supports. It turned out amazing and it looks now a bit more like axial compressor rotor. Also I painted this to yellow to increase the performance even more. I assembled the compressor in the exact same way I did before, also I reused all the stators and pairings. But like we saw before, the PCB way parts are sadly ruined, so I have to use new housing parts. This time they are not transparent, because they are printed with FTM printer. We are not available to see inside the compressor anymore, but before we start testing I also printed you one model to see how it will look inside. Now to the testing, first I did the smoke test again, just for fun, but this time I got way better footage and the airflow is way more, let's say, seeable. But again, this test doesn't give me any information, but it seems to have a bit stronger suction than before.
To get any information to see have improvements actually happened, I tried to blow up the balloon again. Actually I started with the rubber glow, I had a bit more hope for this one. So let's see, can it blow up the rubber glow? And this happened. I did it with 3S battery. This is for sure an improvement. Also the glow expanded out of frame. I repeated the test and placed the camera other side of my room. Also it did it second time. But the balloon, can it blow up the balloon? Let's find out. With 3S, no it didn't. So I tried again with 4S battery. Sadly it didn't blow up the balloon, but the improvement still happened. But this doesn't mean it cannot be improved more. If you are thinking I'm done with axial compressors, you are wrong. I'm going to date complete different approach in next video. I'm building axial compressor which actually has a bit more axial compressor characteristics. Also I try out completely different concept. If you don't wanna miss the next video, make sure you hit subscribe button and turn the notification bell on. This is free and doesn't take you more than one second of your time. But for me it's huge support, so thank you. So see you guys again when my next axial compressors are ready to blow up some balloons. Bye.